So it turns out that the real life story in The Blind Side might not be so real. If you've been living under a rock for the last hundred years, it turns out that Hollywood might not be the most reputable source of information. Now you might remember the 2009 movie, The Blind Side, which was purportedly based on the true story of Michael Orr, who was lifted out of grinding poverty after being taken in by a wealthy Tennessee couple, Sean and Leanne Tui. Uh, thanks to their support, Orr graduated high school, got a scholarship to play football at the Tui's alma mater, Ole Miss, and was selected by the Baltimore Ravens in the first round of the 2009 NFL Draft. Over eight seasons, Orr played for three NFL teams as an offensive tackle and made two Super Bowl appearances, bringing home one Super Bowl ring. The movie earned over $300 million at the box office and was nominated for Best Picture, uh, while uh, Sandra Bullock took home Best Actress for her portrayal of Leanne Tui. And of course, one of the things that makes the film's message so heartwarming is how the Tui's not only treated Orr like family, they legally adopted him into it. We want to know if you would like to become part of this family. Kind of thought I already was. But perhaps you can't believe everything that comes out of Hollywood. According to a 14 page petition filed in Tennessee probate court, Orr alleges that the Tuohys tricked him into signing a document he thought legally made them his adopted parents, but actually made them his conservatives, which uh, purportedly allowed them to enter into business deals in his name and make millions of dollars off of his life. But in response to the lawsuit, the Tuohy family lawyers denied Orr's allegations of exploitation, calling them hurtful and absurd. And one of their lawyers also accused Orr of only filing a petition after the Tuohys refused to pay $15 million as part of a shakedown effort or settlement agreement, depending on which side uh, you are on. But let's talk about these allegations and let's talk about what it means that the Tuohys had a conservatorship over Michael Orr. Under Tennessee law, a conservatorship is a legal proceeding in which a court strips the decision-making ability from someone who is a minor or lacks the legal capacity to make decisions on their own and transfers that ability to one or more conservators. A conservatee is not a member of the family and can consent to the conservatorship by signing the proper legal documents. And also under Tennessee law, conservators have a fiduciary relationship with their conservatees. And with great conservator power comes great legal responsibility and specific legal duties to the conservatee, including a duty to act only in the best interest of the conservatee, manage the conservatee's money uh, properly and carefully, keep the conservatee's money and property separate from the conservators and maintain good records. Now, fiduciaries also must act in a manner that is trustworthy, honest, and in good faith. Those that fail to abide by these standards can be sued and forced to repay the money. In contrast, in adoptions, an adoptee becomes a permanent member of the family, and the parents are legal guardians under Tennessee law. But parents don't have the same strict duties to their children as conservators do to their wards, uh, or uh, for the same length of time. Uh, Tennessee parents have a duty for the care, nurture, welfare, education, and support of their minor children until the child graduates high school, or if 18, completes their current grade. So here on August 14th, 2023, Michael Orr filed a 14 page petition to terminate conservatorship for accounting and other relief in Shelby County, Tennessee probate court. Now the petition makes two main claims. First, that the Tuohys fraudulently induced Orr into consenting into a conservatorship by misrepresenting the documents as adult adoption papers, tricking him into giving them control over his affairs. And second, that the Tuohys have abused their positions as fiduciaries uh, to profit off of Orr's life and likeness uh, for financial gain, including by falsely holding out to the world that they legally adopted Orr as their son. Now, Orr's petition, which is obviously going to be from his side of the story, describes a tragic story that led to him being taken in by the Tuohys, some of which was depicted in The Blind Side, albeit with some dramatic license. On April 14th, 1996, or uh, one of a dozen siblings became a ward of the Tennessee foster system just before turning 12 years old. Or bounced around between the foster care system and being homeless, attending 11 schools in nine years, and repeating the first and second grades. With the help of a friend's father, Orr was admitted to Briarcrest Christian School as a sophomore for the fall of 2002. By fall of 2003, Orr began playing basketball and football, and his talent was apparently immediately recognized, resulting in football scholarship offers pouring in from top colleges. Uh, in the film, several college football coaches cameo as themselves to depict their efforts to recruit Orr. Hello, I'm Tommy Tuberville, Auburn University. Leanne Tui, nice to meet you. Michael? Yes, that's right. Before he was the U.S. Senator single-handedly undermining America's military readiness, Tommy Tuberville got himself an IMDb credit uh, in an Oscar-winning film. Or explained that he was near penniless and got by thanks to the kindness of relatives, friends, and others letting him stay in their homes. Uh, beginning in the summer of 2004, Orr would occasionally stay with Sean and Leanne Tui. And here's how the blind side depicts their decision to welcome Orr into their home beginning in the summer of 2004. I think what you're doing is so great. To open up your home to him, and, honey, you're changing that boy's life. No, he's changing mine.
But Orr's petition portrays the Tui's motives as anything but altruistic. Uh, quote, where other parents of Michael's classmates saw Michael simply as a nice kid in need, conservators Sean Tui and Leanne Tui saw something else, a gullible young man whose athletic talent could be exploited for their own benefit. Uh, in the petition, uh, or asserts that the Tuis told him that they loved him, encouraged him to refer to them as mom and dad, which he did, and promised that they would go through the process of legally adopting him into their family. Except that Orr was never legally adopted. Quote, almost immediately after Michael moved in, the Tuis presented him with what he understood to be legal papers uh, that were a necessary step in the adoption process. Uh, Michael trusted the Tuis and signed uh, where they told him to sign. What he signed, however, and unknown to Michael until after February 2023, uh, were not adoption papers or the equivalent of adoption papers. Instead, it was the Petition for Appointment of Conservators, which was filed in this cause on August 9th, 2004 by Deborah Brannan, attorney of record in this matter. Ms. Brannan was so close to the Tui family that Michael was encouraged to refer to her as Aunt Debbie. Now, according to Orr, uh, the original August 9th, 2004 conservatorship petition states that he, quote, shall not be allowed to enter into any contracts or bind himself uh, without the direct approval of his guardian slash conservators. And he will, quote, not be allowed to make medical decisions for himself. Uh, and as for the Tuis, they, quote, shall have all powers of attorney to enter into contracts for Orr. They, quote, shall have full and complete authority to make medical and educational decisions on Orr's behalf. Uh, and they shall have, quote, full and complete access to all his medical and school records in the same vein as had they been his natural parents and guardians. Now, one of the things that's curious here is the petition's acknowledgement that Orr lacked the typical criteria for being placed in a conservatorship, given that he had no diagnosed physical or psychological disabilities, uh, was 18 years old, and would graduate from high school within the year. And furthermore, while the original conservatorship petition stated it was Orr's decision to end the conservatorship by age 25 at the latest, the final order granted allowed the Tuis to serve until the court decided to terminate the conservatorship. Or alleges that the Tuis never told him that they were assuming sweeping authority over Orr's life and claims that he had been told that this uh, conservatorship petition was required because he was over the age of 18 and that uh, this document was, quote, for all intents and purposes, an adoption. Now, we'll get into the veracity of this purported statement that you can't adopt an adult in Tennessee in a moment, uh, but Orr further alleges that the Tuis have enriched themselves at Orr's expense based on, quote, the lie of Michael's adoption, uh, pointing to Leanne Tuis' personal website and their charitable organization, the Making It Happen Foundation, as examples. It appears that Leanne Tuis explicitly refers to Orr as her adopted son in marketing for her foundation and as a motivational speaker. Now, regarding the financial exploitation, Orr claims that the Tuis have been unjustly enriched from their association with him and excluded him from profits from the Blindside movie. The petition alleges that the Tuis began negotiating a movie deal about their relationship with Orr shortly after the release of the 2006 book, The Blind Side, Evolution of the Game by Michael Lewis, who happens to be a close school friend of Sean Tui. Now, the petition also claims that the movie paid the Tuis and their two birth children each $225,000 plus 2.5% of the film's defined net proceeds. Now, the petition uh, notes that while four of the Tui family members had the same representative at the Creative Artist Agency, or CAA, uh, the agent authorized to receive the movie contract and payment notices for or is Debbie Bronin, the attorney of record from the conservatorship filing and close friend of the Tuies. And of course, the film went on to earn over $300 million at the box office and tens of millions of more in home video sales, probably due to outstanding character writing like this. There's something you should know about me. I don't usually tell many people, but it's something I feel you should be aware of before you hire me. What is it? I'm a Democrat. Okay. The petition further alleges that a separate 2007 contract reportedly signed by Orr appears to, quote, give away to 20th Century Fox, quote, without any payment whatsoever, the perpetual, unconditional, and exclusive right to use Orr's name, likeness, voice, appearance, personality, and personal experiences. The filing states that Orr has no recollection of signing this contract, but if he did, uh, no one explained the implications of what he was signing. Uh, the petition also alleges that Alcon Entertainment, LLC, the successor to Fox, donated $200,000 to Leanne's uh, Making It Happen Foundation in October of 2010, which Orr believes came from uh, a, quote, amendment to life story rights agreement. Uh, Orr asserts that the Tuis never informed Orr of any amendment to his life rights agreement, nor did they secure any amendment that would ensure Orr otherwise benefited from the movie's success. Now, of course, if you ever found yourself in a conservatorship like Michael Orr or Britney Spears, you'd probably need a good lawyer to get out of it. But if you want a great lawyer, my firm, the Eagle Team, can help. If you've had an injury or death in the family, suffered a data breach, are dealing with Social Security disability or workers' comp, we can represent you or help find you the right attorney who can. Just click on the link in the description for a free consultation with my team. Because you don't just need a legal team, 
You need the Eagle team. The link is below. Now back to Michael Orr and the blind side. So Orr contends that the Tuohys have breached several of their duties as conservators uh, with their failure to file any yearly accounting of the conservatorship spending and assets, including Orr's life rights, uh, file any statement relating to Orr's mental or physical condition as to whether the conservatorship should continue as required by Tennessee law, and to act in Orr's best interest as required for fiduciaries. So Orr's petition asked the court to end the Tuohys conservatorship and to issue an injunction barring them from using his name and likeness. It also seeks a full accounting of the money that the Tuohys earned using Orr's name uh, and to have the couple pay him uh, his fair share of profits, as well as unspecified court costs, attorney's fees, and compensatory and punitive damages. Now, in response to the petition, attorneys representing the Tuohys, of course, denied Orr's claims of deception and financial exploitation. In a lengthy statement, famed attorney to the stars Marty Singer described the Orr's allegations as outlandish, hurtful, and absurd. Uh, quote, the idea that the Tuohys have ever sought to profit off of Michael Orr is not only offensive, it is transparently ridiculous. The notion that a couple worth hundreds of millions of dollars would connive to withhold a few thousand dollars in profit participation payments from anyone, let alone from someone they loved as a son, defies belief. Uh, Singer claimed that the documentation in the form of profit participation checks and studio accounting statements would demonstrate that the Tuohys have given Mr. Orr an equal cut of every penny received from the blind side. Uh, Singer also accused Orr of engaging in a pre-lawsuit shakedown, claiming the ex-NFL star threatened to uh, plant a negative story about the Tuohys in the press unless they paid him $15 million. Singer also asserted that, quote, as part of the shakedown effort, Orr stopped cashing the royalty checks from the blind side, even as the Tuohys continued to deposit Orr's money into a trust account they set up for him. With respect to the conservatorship, Singer asserts that there was nothing underhanded about the arrangement and no money was made from it. Quote, in spite of the false allegation in the lawsuit, the Tuohys have always been upfront about how a conservatorship from which not one penny was received, was established to assist with Mr. Orr's needs, ranging from getting him health insurance and obtaining a driver's license to helping with college admissions. Should Mr. Orr wish to terminate the conservatorship, either now or at any time in the future, the Tuohys will never oppose it in any way. And as for the Tuohys, Singer asserts that they are heartbroken over these events and hope that they can be reconciled someday. In an August 16th press conference, the Tuohys local counsel, Randall Fishman and Stephen Farisi, uh, further disputed claims that the family exploited or financially through the conservatorship. The Tuohys did not control any of Mr. Orr's finances. Mr. Orr picked his own agent. When he signed pro, Mr. Orr signed his own contract and negotiated it through his agents. Uh, the attorneys also insisted that each of the five family members, including Orr, received an estimated $100,000 from the blind side. Quote, Michael got every dime, every dime he had coming. Fishman also claimed that Orr knew he was not legally adopted by the Tuohys much earlier than February 2023, noting that Orr had acknowledged the conservatorship on three separate occasions, uh, in particular in his book. Uh, and here's how Orr described the arrangement in his best-selling memoir, I Beat the Odds. Quote, it kind of felt like a formality as I'd been a part of the family for more than a year at that point. Since I was already over the age of 18 and considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne uh, would be named as my legal conservators. They explained to me that it means pretty much the exact same thing as adoptive parents, but the laws were just written in a way that took my age into account. Asked why Orr was not legally adopted, Fishman said, quote, it didn't make any difference to the Tuohys and added, quote, there was one thing to accomplish and that was to make him part of the family so that the NCAA would be satisfied because Sean would have been a booster of the university. Uh, after uh, the legal team's press conference, uh, Orr's counsel provided the following statement. Quote, we continue to stand with Michael and the statement he released. We also concur with his attorney, Don Barrett. We believe that justice will be served in the courtroom where cases are based on facts. Now, in response to Orr's allegations, Sean Tui denied the claims of financial exploitation, saying, quote, we didn't make any money off the movie. He said that Michael Lewis, Sean Tui's childhood friend who wrote the book on which the film is based, gave his family half of the share of profits from the book. Tui said each member of the family, including Orr, received an equal share of about $14,000. Quote, we were never offered money. We'd never asked for money. My money is well documented. You can look up how much I sold my company for. Tui also said that he would, of course, end the conservatorship for Orr. But Tui defended placing Orr into a conservatorship instead of adopting him, citing advice of counsel. Quote, Michael was obviously living with us for a long time and the NCAA didn't like that. They said the only way Michael could go to Ole Miss was if he was actually part of the family. I sat Michael down and told him, if you're planning to go to Ole Miss or even considering Ole Miss, we think you have to be part of the family. This would do that legally. We contacted lawyers who told us that we couldn't adopt him over the age of 18. The only thing we could do was to have a conservatorship. We were so concerned it was on the up and up that we made sure the biological mother came to court. And the film does show why an NCAA investigator had concerns that the Tuohys may indeed have ulterior motives in taking him in. The NCAA fears that with your recruitment, a door might be opened. 
that boosters from lots of schools in the South have become legal guardians of young athletes without means and funnel them to their alma maters. They clothed you, no. they fed you, they paid no. for your private education, they bought you a car no. and paid for a tutor. No. All is part of a plan to ensure that you play football for the University of Mississippi. However, Tui's claim that you can't adopt an adult is categorically false. Uh, Tennessee is one of the 29 states plus the District of Columbia that allows the adoption of adults. In fact, the process is easier when the adoptee is over 18. It only requires their consent. So either Sean isn't telling the truth or multiple lawyers gave him bad advice, or there's some other reason possibly related to the NCAA that we don't know about. And if lawyers really did give that advice, then the toys uh, should probably ask for a refund. Now, as always, we need to note that Orr's claims are merely allegations unless and until evaluated by a court of law. And the same goes for the Tui's accusations against Orr. But based on the information available, here's what we know and what we don't know. For starters, both sides agree that Orr was placed into a conservatorship and both sides agree that Orr was told, perhaps incorrectly, that this was effectively the same as legal adoption and had to be done because you cannot legally adopt an adult in Tennessee. Now, we don't know whether this is a case of negligent lawyering or malicious intent. Uh, or something else. And also the conservatorship order is just odd in many ways. For example, it tacitly acknowledges that Orr has none of the traditional qualities that would make him a candidate for conservatorship. Orr was 18 years old and not a minor. He had no known physical or psychological disabilities. And yet the conservatorship order robs Orr of his contractual autonomy and explicitly states that Orr, quote, shall not be allowed to enter into any contracts or bind himself without the direct approval of his conservators. It also provides that any and all medical decisions shall be made by the conservators who will have full and complete authority to make these decisions and educational decisions decisions on Orr's behalf. In other words, the narrow purpose of the conservatorship espoused by the Tui family doesn't really comport with the sweeping powers granted to them over Orr. And if the Tui's goals were really just to help Orr get a driver's license and health insurance, placing an 18-year-old into a conservatorship of undetermined length is a very heavy-handed way of accomplishing that. And as for claims of financial exploitation by the conservatorship, an accurate accounting should clarify if the family did in fact earn money through the conservatorship that was due to Michael Orr that he never received. And we don't know uh, the veracity of Orr's claims that the Tuies, uh, through trickery or forgery, got him to sign away his life rights for nothing. And it's also unclear if the Tuies were falsely claiming that they legally adopted him for profit, or if they were figuratively declaring him their son due to a close familial relationship, even if no paperwork to that effect had been filed. And how would you refer to someone who is under your conservatorship? Uh, under these circumstances. And on top of that, while the Tuies claim that they had conservatorship power over Orr, they never really exercised that with respect to his contractual rights uh, once he went to college. This should be a very easy claim to prove or disprove. And it's also possible that a lot of these questions are going to be answered in discovery. We just simply don't know what the answers are right now. To that effect, Orr has propounded discovery requests that will probably help illuminate which side story is more credible. Uh, Orr has issued expansive subpoenas to the Make It Happen Foundation and attorney Deborah Bronin, uh, seeking among other things, all documents and communications related to the blind side and uh, the circumstances surrounding Orr's conservatorship and a full financial accounting of Leanne's charitable foundation. And this also may be a case of seeking money that never existed. The producers of the Blindside movie, who run Alcon Entertainment, said that the contracts, quote, did not include significant payouts in the event of the film's success. And therefore, quote, the notion that the Tuies were paid millions of dollars by Alcon to the detriment of Michael Orr is false. And evidently, the producers paid out about $767,000 to the talent agency representing the Tuies and Orr, but they noted that there was likely an agency commission removed before the sum was distributed to the five members of the family. So it's unclear who's telling the truth and what happened here. There may be an assumption by Orr that because the movie earned $300 million at the box office, that the movie made more money than it actually did. But don't get me started about Hollywood accounting. There's lots of wildly successful movies that are in the red because of the way that they are accounted for. And reminder, that's one of the reasons why SAG-AFTRA is currently boycotting right now. But it's also weird that the Tuies used a conservatorship, one that continues to this day. Now, if you spend any time on the internet, it can feel like you're in a conservatorship if your personal data is being used by nefarious people. But you can get your online personal data taken down with today's sponsor, Incogni. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen a huge uptick in the amount of spam I'm getting, and it's no surprise why. Every year, the number and scope of data breaches worldwide is rising. And you might not know it, but there are hundreds of data brokers out there that possess and sell your personal information, and their numbers grow every year. These data brokers might have a whole shadow profile on you, including your name, your address, phone number, shopping habits, possibly even your social security number, all up for the highest bidder. And at best, this leads to scam calls, and at worst, identity theft and doxing. 
So for example, if you're getting tons of robocalls, your cell phone or calls from scammers like I am basically every day, there's a good chance that that's because your data is online. And sometimes it's completely legal, but totally nefarious, like health insurance companies raising their rates because they got access to your personal health data. But that's where Incogni comes in. Incogni fights on your behalf to remove your personal data from data brokers and deals with any objections from their side. All you have to do is create an account and give them approval to work on your behalf. And then Incogni conducts repeated ongoing removals because even if the broker removes your data once, they might collect it again, which is just so dumb. But Incogni makes sure that your personal information stays off the market for good. You can actually see when Incogni does this on your personal dashboard. This is mine. It shows that these three sites had data on me that was rated 10 out of 10 on Incogni's sensitivity scale. And those brokers had my data, including my contacts, my financial data, and health data. And thankfully, Incogni uh, told me when their removal requests were completed, so I could breathe easily. It, it was terrifying to see exactly how many brokers had my data, but it's really fun to watch Incogni get them to delete that info one by one, and it shows up immediately on your dashboard. So if you'd like to give Incogni a try, click on the link below to get 60% off Incogni when you use the code LEGALEAGLE. Again, to get a, an exclusive 60% off discount, just click on the link that's on screen right now or down in the description and use the code LEGALEAGLE. After that, click on this link over here for more Legal Eagle, or I'll see you in court.